Hi, I'm Peter Cowan, The Bee Whisperer. It is Monday, June 5th, and here in Hamden, Maine, we are in the midst of one of these upper pressure, upper level lows, which are the things I really hate to see in June. It, the weather has turned terrible. Um, for the last few weeks, we've been getting beautiful sunny weather. In fact, Thursday, Friday, Friday, it was uh, into the 80s and 90s Fahrenheit. That's the high 20s, 30s centigrade. And the bees were happy as can be. They were uh, bringing in loads of nectar, loads of pollen. And then suddenly the curtain came down. And uh, now we're into a spell of weather, which we don't see the end of right now. Uh, I'm looking at the 10 day forecast and almost every day has rain forecast for it. Um, what's worse is that the temperatures are down into the 40s and 50s, uh, gradually going up into the 60s towards the end of that period, when it should be normally in the 70s and 80s. So uh, there's quite a few consequences to a spell of weather like this, um, not least of which, um, any hives that we've got at the moment that would have been taking advantage of the locust honey flow, the black locust, are going to miss it because over the next two weeks, looks like most of the foraging days that the black locust will be in bloom are going to be cold and wet. And so I don't see much black locust honey coming. Hopefully the rain will do some good. We needed some rain. We didn't need two weeks of cloud and cold uh, to achieve it. A few thunderstorms would have just been nice, but uh, we needed the rain. So maybe there will be a bonus to come of it by um, the clover honey flow, which would just be getting started soon. The problem is I've seen the clover honey flow come to a total halt with an up level low like this. I can remember um, maybe 10 years back we we're having a nice clover honey flow started. And uh, towards the last week of June, we got a week like this, and then the honey flow just never came back. It killed it stone dead. But because the clover hasn't even started yet, maybe this will be just what it needs beforehand to kick it into gear. Uh, you have to be an eternal optimist as a beekeeper because uh, uh, these things are certainly sent to try us. So hopefully the clover honey flow will make up for the loss of uh, the locust honey flow and uh, we'll see some uh, good come in the end. And uh, we won't have the drought situation that we've been dealing with normally. And perhaps the honey flows that have been ending in early July the last few years will continue towards the end of July like they used to. Who knows? We shall wait and see. Actually, as it happens, most of my colonies are still nukes because of the uh, difficulties we had in terms of getting nuke production going this year uh, with the terrible weather we had in April. The um, situation is that uh, right now, I don't think I've got more than a dozen hives that are more than nuke size because I split every single hive that I had in order to make the nukes for people um, in a timely manner. Uh, so now um, I've made enough nukes that I'm starting to grow a few of them uh, for my honey production hives. And in fact, what I'm going to probably do is uh, take some of those nukes and have turned the nukes into honey producers by having double nukes and honey, uh, communal honey super above them. Uh, but more of that in um, upcoming videos. So what do we do about hives that are in this state at the moment? Um, there's a bit of a contrast between how things are going for some hives compared to others. For those colonies that went into this period with very low stores, for instance nukes, with low pollen stores, low nectar stores, uh, or low honey stores, there's a danger that those could starve over the next week to 10 days because they're not going to have much opportunity to get out into the field and any, even if they could, there's not going to be much nectar out there because of the cold, uh, the cold and the wet. So the colonies uh, without resources are in danger of starvation. 
Uh, the colonies with low pollen stores are in danger of going into protein stress because if they don't have that protein, they can't produce the royal jelly to feed the queen and to feed the young brood. And so they end up cannibalizing some of that brood. So it's certainly time to feed sugar syrup and time to feed pollen patties with this um, long-term spell of bad weather that we can see in the forecast. So if you can feed pollen patties and sugar syrup, your colonies will continue to grow un unchecked. Um, uh, now, those of you in the rest of the country are laughing, but the uh, right now here, it's just the time when maximum growth should be taking place in the hives. And actually we should have just been kicking into the proper honey flows now. So um, I see uh, trouble ahead. Now, for those colonies that have gone into this period with bumper stores and a, develop, a good developing brood chamber, this we could have a total opposite problem. Um, they are eating honey reserves, they're eating up pollen and things, giving the queen even more and more room to lay more brood, but she can outpace that. And the problem is all those field bees are staying indoors all this period. So that means that the brood nest is feeling more and more crowded with bees. And uh, what happens when a colony is starting to feel crowded is they start to look at swarming. And uh, a lot of colonies are going to go into swarming, one, because people aren't going out into the rain to manage their hives, and number two, because the colonies are so getting so crowded just at the time when so much brood is emerging. Now, um, we can do things like rain or shine, go out there and put a, a super or two on the hives to give them some more room to get some of those field bees out of the brood nest. You could, if we get breaks in the weather, um, checkerboard the brood nest, spread the brood nest over a, another super and put frames of foundation in between, even though we don't have time to uh, do proper manipulations or splits, we could depopulate the brood chamber somewhat. The weather is not good enough to do a demurry split, but um, I think that uh, I'll be doing um, recommending a few of those to some of my friends uh, in the, in as soon as the weather clears. But um, just putting the room on may not be enough, and so a lot of these colonies are going to swarm. And when are they going to swarm? They're going to swarm as soon as the weather breaks. Um, some might even swarm as on the just the rain stops and we get a, a period a few hours without rain and they're able to fly um, because those queen cells will have been being built and they will be emerging and those, uh, the older queen will be leaving with a swarm come what may on some occasions. But if, if this ends with a sunny day in a few days time or a week's time, it's going to really sync up all the swarms that would have taken place over the previous week and they're all going to take place in the same day. It's going to be Swarmageddon because you're going to have many, many, many swarms from all sorts of different circumstances and different beekeepers all happening on the same day. So anyone who's on their uh, state swarm team expects some phone calls. Look at the weather forecast and as soon as you see the break in the weather, there's going to be a few phone calls for collecting swarms because as soon as we have a break in the weather, especially a little bit of sun, those bees are going to be out in the trees um, at double quick time. So fortunately for me, with all my hives split down to nukes, I don't expect to see many, many swarms at all, but I expect to get plenty of calls from people with swarms. So um, during this rainy day, I think I'll, have to, I'll make up a few extra deep supers with foundation because I think uh, I'll be selling a lot of uh, single, uh, single deeps uh, with bases and tops for people who have suddenly got a new, new hive of bees to house. So the, um, we can add room, we can um, certainly try to keep the bees, the lighter hives fed, uh, but certainly expect to see swarms happening as soon as this weather breaks. Um, that's, and so in, in the meantime, I'm busy getting the shock shells, shells restocked. Uh, I'm getting in between showers, I'm getting out there to check on a few nukes. I get a few breaks, half an hour this afternoon, I was able to go through a 
a couple dozen nukes to see what state they were in so they could be handed out in the rain in the coming week. Um, but and transferring hives from one yard to another in the rain, but uh, I don't want to really go through, I can't really go through them in the rain, or at least I don't want to, I don't want to risk chilling brood. But uh, I'm uh, busy handing out nukes to folks as they come. I hate doing it in the rain, but uh, we've got no choice. Anyway, um, that's part of beekeeping. I'm Peter Cowan, the Bee Whisperer. See you next time.